All right, this is an example of how to calculate empirical molecular formula for AP chemistry. Um, I'm going to be using problem 3.49a as the problem to demonstrate how to do this. Uh, first off, uh, problem A gives you styrene, which is a compound substance used to form styrofoam. So, the given information that you're provided is 92.3% carbon. You're also provided 7 0.7% hydrogen, and uh, you know that the substance has a molar mass of 104 grams per mole. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to follow the steps outlined in the text, which is if you're given percentages, the best thing to do is assuming that you're working with 100 grams. So what you can do is you multiply each of these by 100 and this is assuming that you have 100 grams of styrene and you end up with 92.3 grams of carbon and 7.7 .7 grams of hydrogen. This is useful to do because once you have the mass of each you can now convert them into moles. So 92.3 grams carbon times fraction converting it to moles and then I'm going to do the same for hydrogen 7.7 .7 grams H times 1 mole over grams. And uh, this number down here, of course, comes from the periodic table. It's uh, weight. So 12.01 for carbon and 1.01 .01 for hydrogen. Of course, I'm getting this information from the periodic table. I like to use 1.01 uh, .01 for hydrogen, most of my calculations, and 12.01 .01 for carbon. All right, so now I'm get out my calculator. I'm going to do the math. So 92.3 divided by 12.01, and I get 7.69 moles. Notice I'm keeping it in the same number of significant figures as I started. Keeping it at three sig figs is usually a good thing to do. And then the 7.7 .7 grams of hydrogen divided by 1.01, .01, and then I get 7.62 moles of hydrogen. All right. Now, the next step that you follow is what you're going to want to do is divide by the smallest. Dividing by the smallest amount, you take each number, 7.69 moles of carbon, and you take 7.62 moles of hydrogen, and the smallest number is 7.62, so I'm going to divide each by 7.62. Obviously this gives me just one hydrogen for approximately about one carbon. This means that the empirical formula for this problem is CH. To figure out what the molecular formula is, you are given a formula in your textbook well, what you do is you take the molar mass. Actually, let me write out the whole formula for you. The whole formula for writing it out is that the whole number multiple is equal to the molecular weight, which is essentially molar mass as you learned in regular chemistry, divided by the empirical formula weight. Now what this means is you're basically taking a big number divided by a smaller number. So if you forget which to divide by, always usually do the big divided by the small. All right, now a reference for this, I had to pause to look this up in the textbook to see what page you guys could reference this from. This comes from page 98. So to figure out the molecular weight, well, that information is actually given to us. It's 104 grams per mole. The empirical formula weight. Well, we said the empirical formula was CH, so that means we know carbon's 12.01, hydrogen's about 1.01. .01. We add those two together, we get 13.02 grams per mole. Now, take both of those numbers, take 104, divided by 13.02, enter, and you end up with a whole number multiple of somewhere around 8. 
because it actually ends up being 7.99. And that's pretty close to 8. That's good enough for our purposes. So the molecular formula is actually C8H8. Why? The empirical formula was CH, and when we have this multiple, we multiply each by 8. So we end up with C8H8 for the molecular formula, we have CH for the empirical formula. Hi, this is Mr. Barron. What we're going to be doing is learning how to round in chemistry. The way that we round in this class is going to be with uh, something called significant figures. So on your piece of paper, I want you to write down what I write down, because this is going to serve as your notes and your reference for how to round long numbers in this class. So we're calling this LE significant figures. So again, significant figures are used to round. So we have specific rules that we follow for rounding numbers in chemistry. And what we have to be able to do is understand which numbers are actually significant in a measurement. The way we do this is that we set up these rules for counting. So there's actually only four rules for counting. And you're not going to find them terribly hard once you look at them. So rule number one is that we have to understand that anything that's not a zero in a number is always going to be counted as a significant figure. We often use the word sig figs, and I'll write this next to the title of the lecture, as shorthand for saying significant figures. So you'll hear me use the word sig figs instead of significant figures. So rule number one is that all non-zero numbers are significant. So I'm going to go through a couple of different examples on this. So examples of numbers using this rule where we're counting significant figures. So if I have a number, say 55, I'm going to count how many significant figures I have. Well, the 5 is not a 0, and the other 5 is not a 0. 1, 2, I make these little tick marks in front of it, and it has two sig figs. I'm going to do a, another example of this. Say I have the number 600, 600. So, rule says that all non-zeros are significant. So, non-zeros are things obviously not zeros, so the 6 is significant. These two zeros are not significant. So we have a total of one sig fig. I'll do one last example. Say I have the number 780. I look for all the numbers that aren't zeros, the 7, the 8, these two are significant, the zero is not, I have two sig figs. So that's a way to that's rule number one. Rule number two is that squish zeros are significant. Now, since squish zeros are significant, the way that we follow these rules is that if I have a non-zero like 6, and then I have a 0, and then I have another 0, and then I have the number 9, so the number 6009, and I want to count significant figures, rule number 1 always applies, so 6 and 9 are automatically significant figures. But see how this 0 and that 0 are in between two non-zeros? Because of that, these two zeros count as significant. So, I have a total of four sig figs. I'm going to walk you through one more example of this. Say I have the number 9010. Zero, zero. Alright, so for this number, the 9 is significant because of rule 1, the 1 is significant because of rule 1, and this 0 is in between two non-zeros, so it's significant as well. This zero, however, is not squished. It's not in between two non-zeros. So the number of significant figures for this problem is three sig figs. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at rule three. Rule one and rule two are pretty simple so far. We're going to move to rule three. Rule three says that all zeros to the left
of the first non-zero are never significant. Now, that's a lot of words to describe something that's actually pretty simple. Let me walk you through a couple examples. First example. Say I have the number, I'm working with 906. And I want to count sig figs. Well, rule one is all non-zeros are significant. Squishers, this is in between two non-zeros, are significant. So it has a total of three sig figs. Now, you know that if I added a zero in front of that nine, that zero doesn't provide any meaning at all to the number. Because of that, any zeros to the left of that first non-zero, they never count. And I'll provide some examples of this. Some more examples. Say I have the number 0 0.055. All right. I know from rule one that all non-zeros are significant. I don't have any zeros squished in between two non-zeros, but I do have these zeros to the left of my first non-zero. So again, we have to become comfortable with what a non-zero is. This 5 and that 5 are non-zeros, but this is my first non-zero. That means everything, absolutely everything to the left of it, all of these zeros, they are not significant. And because of that, this number right here has a total of two sig figs. All right, we're going to begin with the last rule. Now, the last rule is the only tricky one. So far, you got it. Let's just review what we've learned so far. So we've learned that anything that's not a zero, duh, is significant. We've also learned that zeros that are squished are significant, and that if I have one hanging off on the end, that's not significant as well. Now, rule three says that anything to the left of the first non-zero, they're not significant. And that follows our rules quite clearly. Rule four provides an exception for when zeros can count when there's a decimal. So I'm going to write rule four up here, and this is the most important part. If there is a decimal, and this only works if there's a decimal. Zeros to the right of the last non-zero are significant. I'll give you some examples of this. Example number one. We're going to look at so we're going to look at a number that has a total of, eh, let's see here, let's look at the number 5.080. All right, let's start with rule one. Rule one says all my non-zeros are significant. That makes sense. Zero in between the two non-zeros. That works because it's squished. Squished zeros count. Now, it says in rule four, if there is a decimal, and aha, uh -huh, there's a decimal, zeros to the right of the last non-zero are significant. The last non-zero is this 8 right here. That means because there's this decimal, anything to the right of it counts. So I have a total of 4 sig figs. Now, let's look at another number. Say I have 5.00. All right, I know the 5 is significant. Hey, there's a decimal. Okay. That means everything to the right of this last non-zero is significant. So these two zeros in this case do count. So there's a total of three sig figs. Now, that's different than if I had the number 500. 500 doesn't have any decimal. Because it doesn't have any decimal, the five is significant, and that's it. And I have a total of one sig fig. Now, let's look at one that has all four rules playing in at the same time. Let's look at the number 0 0.006070. Looks pretty big. It's tough to, to be able to count because you have to actually apply all four rules. But if you follow it systematically, it makes sense. So I have two non-zeros here and here. Hey, there's a zero squished. So this zero is squished. And because it's squished, it does count. Now, 
Rule number three, let's go back to three. Three says that anything to the left of the first non-zero never counts. This is my first non-zero. Because the six is my first non-zero, everything to the left of it doesn't count. Now, let's apply rule four. There's a decimal. That means everything to the right of my last non-zero counts. So the seven that I've highlighted in pink, that's my last non-zero. Everything to the right of it counts. That means I now have a total of four sig figs. Now I'm going to do one last example with you. We're going to do a couple together. You might want to pause the feed and then stop and play around with it yourself. Let's start with uh, 5.06. All right, this question has two non-zeros and a squished one. Squished one counts, three sig figs. Let's do another one. Say I have the number 0 0.007. Now this is where students make mistakes sometimes. They say, hey, there's a decimal. That means stuff to the right of it counts. No, stuff to the right of the last non-zero counts, but there's nothing to the right of it. Remember rule three says, all of this stuff to the left of the first non-zero doesn't count, and that's exactly true. So this number right here has only set, or has only one sig fig. Let's do one last example. 0 0.0080. Now, in this problem, I said everything to the left of the first non-zero doesn't count, so we ignore it. The seven significant. There is a decimal, so stuff to the right of that 8 does count. So there are two sig figs. Now, we haven't gotten to the rounding piece. The rounding piece on how to round has other rules applied to it as well. But first, what I would like you to do is I'm going to post a worksheet titled Significant Figures. I would like you to practice counting significant figures on this worksheet. When you come back to class, we are definitely going to be doing some practice additionally with counting significant figures, and then we'll take it to the next step on how to round.